Hi, this is Eric Schlappi with Schlappi Engineering, and I'm going to demonstrate amplitude modulation. Quick rundown of the modules I chose to use to demonstrate amplitude modulation. Two angle grinders as the oscillators. Uh, the angle grinder is a quadrature sine wave oscillator, all analog with wave shaping capabilities. The 4Q, the 4Q is a prototype discrete core linear four quadrant multiplier built for personal use. Um, it also works great as a VCA. We'll see if I ever release it or do anything else with it, but it's what I'm demonstrating amplitude modulation with. Um, you don't need these specific modules, any uh, decent sine wave and four quadrant multiplier or ring mod or bipolar, bipolar VCA should work for this. I also am using maths in the patch for um, my modulation source. Two LFOs slash envelopes with um, uh, a built-in mixer and attenuverter. Super handy for just about everything. And this weld dual VCA um, four quadrant multiplier, which is another prototype of mine. Amplitude modulation comes in a bunch of different forms. Uh, the biggest, biggest differences are really uh, whether the modulation is at or below audio rate. Below audio rate, the form you're most familiar with is when you apply an envelope or an LFO to a VCA and you create separate notes or just use it to control the volume of a signal. So the our carrier is this strange wave shape, the green trace. The modulator is this blue trace, which is just a really slow sine wave. And the output is the red trace. You can see that um, as the blue trace goes through zero, the output goes to zero. Now, in this particular case, since I'm using a four quadrant multiplier, as the modulator goes negative, then the signal actually inverts. We'll come back to that in a second. So you can hear as we push the frequency up, at first we get like a tremolo effect. And then as we keep pushing the modulator frequency up, we get classic ring modulation type effects. A standard VCA is a two quadrant multiplier. It multiplies two signals X and Y against each other. The audio input can be both negative and positive, and the CV input can only be positive. One of the critical things being here that if either one of these signals are zero, then the output should be zero. A four quadrant multiplier is one that allows both signals to go both positive and negative, which means if you um, multiply one signal by a negative signal, then it'll actually invert the signal. So at audio rates, we're creating sidebands at the sum and difference between the toes. This will work with a standard VCA, except because it doesn't pass the negative part of the wave, you're clipping, you're rectifying, you're creating square waves out of the modulating signal. And that can sound pretty harsh. If you're using a four quadrant multiplier, you will get this formula. Sine A times sine B equals cosine A minus B minus cosine A plus B. For each two tones you put in, you're going to get out two difference tones. Let's look at that on our little data spectrum analyzer. We're going to bring the carrier down to just a sine wave. Just a steady DC for the modulator at first. 
we can see that the carrier is just one tone, a single line there. Now if we take our modulator and slowly bring it to audio rate, we will see that one tone separate into two sum and difference tones. And if the sum and difference is high enough, you'll actually see that bottom line go through zero and back up. It is worth noting that <laughs> uh, there is such a thing as negative frequencies. So if you use just two sine waves, it's not that interesting because you're only creating these two tones. But if you bring one of our signals, so let's bring in a DC bias. Now our carrier signal is some weird jagged shape. Now let's bring back in our modulator. And each one of those harmonics of the carrier gets some indifference tones. So the more harmonics the carrier has, the more tones to multiply against. If we bring in harmonics for the modulator, all of those also get some indifference tones. It can get quite noisy. It's worth thinking of it as all the sine waves that make up each waveform, and any waveform can be thought of as a son of sinusoids multiplying against each other. I did mention that this can be viewed as ring modulation. I'm not a huge fan of that term because it refers to a historical implementation of this circuitry, um, which is still sometimes used. It's a ring of diodes, but it's not always easy to get good results out of that circuit. Uh, in this particular case, and probably most Im implementations you'll find in modular systems, your four you quadrant multiplier is actually two VCAs, one that passes signal when the modulating input is positive and one that passes signal when the modulating input is negative and that one is inverted. Uh, in this particular implementation I'm using uh, discrete transistor long-tailed pairs but more often you'll probably see a couple of VCA chips. There are also um, actual four quadrant multiplier chips but they are generally fairly expensive and there are relatively few modules that use those. So a frequency shifter is made when you select only one of these generated tones. This is how AM transmitters work. AM receivers require filtering and at least one other multiplication step to get one of these sidebands and shift it back into audio rate. It's worth mentioning self amplitude modulation, which isn't always interesting, but it's worth knowing about where if you uh, modulate one signal by itself, um, you can get interesting wave shapes, but generally subtle variations in tone because you're essentially squaring the wave shape. So if you put in two straight lines, you'll get an X squared, which is kind of like a sinusoidal shape. Here's a simple patch using amplitude modulation.
Well, I went through a <laughs> few different variations on this patch. But so the first angle grinder here is our carrier, and it's going directly into the audio input of our four quadrant multiplier, um, VCA ring mod. The second angle grinder is going through a VCA into the mixer on maths. The first channel of the max maths mixer is um, being mixed, is being used as an envelope and is being mixed or LFO and being mixed with um, the uh, signal from the second angle grinder. And that, the second channel of maths is controlling the volume of the second <laughs> Uh, angle grinder so that we have um, we have control both over the overall volume and um, the amount of amplitude modulation. Let me get this back a little bit. So right here we have a long but percussive envelope from the first channel and then another envelope being triggered by it on the second channel. It's not so obvious with this current settings but we're basically adding harmonics um, if we bring the second angle grinder up a bit, we can make it more obvious. There's sort of a classic AM bell tone. Where we've got this strike The strike caused by the um, <laughs> the strike coming from the amplitude modulation from the modulator fading out to just the carrier. And if we pull down some of the waveform sliders, we'll hear it with just two sine waves. It's maybe more like a bell tone with <laughs> two sine waves, but it's. It's more, more interesting with some sort of harmonic on the carrier and the second, the modulator being just a sine wave. So again, I want to say what makes a patch interesting is um, dynamic modulation. In this case, modulating the modulation. Uh, here's a graphic representation of that patch where the module, modulation oscillator is having its volume controlled by an envelope, then mixed together with another envelope and applied to the carrier oscillator. And that's all I have to say about amplitude modulation today. Thanks for watching.